Ah, friends, be ready for a saucy one. It's the, come on, it's the Chris Apology Tour. Come on. That's right. We're going to take a look at the soft white underbelly of Chris D'Elia. Apparently, he has surfaced. I mean, yeah, he was canceled. But what really happened to him? For those of you who don't know, Chris D'Elia is a <laughs> American comedian who had some success in some things and some stuff and was moving up on his career when some things happened. Some, some stuff and some things. Let's take a look. He was, uh, let's look at his Wikipedia. Imagine this is your Wikipedia article. <laughs> your name is Chris D'Elia, an up-and-comer comedian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be some Chris D'Elia defenders, which I'm not opposed to. Look, the man was never convicted of anything. So you can't necessarily come after him. And guess what? He has a wife and some kids, so let the man speak. Let the man come through. Uh, but he had some big time success. He was in, he was in uh, the Good Doctor and in the Netflix thriller You, where he played an underage creeper, <laughs> a uh, sex pest, if you will. Interesting choice there, my friend. Some people, like John Cusack, just play themselves. Chris D'Elia is a real actor, though. He's an actor. So, yeah, he was a um, he was in Chicago Hope, but he's a, he's a stand-up guy, right? Because he started as an actor, but he's a sta he, he claims he's a, he's a stand-up guy. He's very, very popular. Some people like him. He says crazy things. I never found him to be all that incredibly... Uh, funny but yeah you know stand-up's a funny thing it, it's a very difficult difficult job but you know making people laugh ain't easy and uh it's it's hard to capture things in the moment so uh you know i've been to some la uh open micer rooms and my god people like to just watch people die if you want to watch, if you ever get yourself in the position where you want to watch the most embarrassing thing you've ever seen in your entire life Go to an open mic night where you literally watch people die on stage telling things that you just you want to crawl up into a corner and just never ever speak of again. Um, so Chris D'Elia had some success and then unfortunately this happened. Rolling Stone and the LA Times dropped some bombs on him. Multiple women, we're talking about 10 women, came forward as part of the Me Too thing in interviews with rolling stones 10 women came forward and accused him of predatory being a predator not in the jungles not in the congo not even in the urban underground of la well maybe there um but uh, they all claim they were teenagers when he preyed on them yeah but a, never convicted of anything just want to say that he they claim he was emotionally manipulating them you get demands for free tickets. I mean, is that not you selling something for something? You got something in return. I think there's a term for that. I'm not sure what it is. But apparently he was, you know, imposing curfews, micromanaging their wardrobes, monitoring their weight. Apparently he was married at the time. I don't know exactly what is going on here. Uh, but again, he was friends with, like, Rogan and... Um, Whitney Cummings and, and a lot of people, big time, in Hollywood. Well, he's finally crawled out from under a rock. He does have his own podcast, which I will I will take a look at. Uh, I did not actually listen to anything he says because I just watched this interview. The interview is an hour or something odd long. And I just want to show you the soft white underbelly. Uh, those guys, I guess I'll like post the... You can watch it for yourself. It's very long. It, it, and this is an, as of no fault of the interviewer. It's not super interesting. A lot of it, like, I think the first 40 minutes is of him talking about himself. It's very self-indulgent for someone who's supposed to be talking about, like, how terrible all of this is. But this guy, uh, I, I don't know that much about this channel, big channel. Um, 
But they do these like crazy interviews of, uh, you know, a prostitute and of uh, inbred families and schizophren- schizophrenics and fetishists and all sorts of interesting people. Ex-cartel hitmen and drug smugglers and they all just get interviewed. So why <laughs> is this supposed to be like make him look edgy? Like I feel like this dude's some kind of edge lord. Like Crystalia thinks he's some sort of weird edge lord. And watching this interview, I'm like, bro's got prison tattoos, neck tattoos, and look, you can have whatever tattoos you want. I don't care. But he's dressed like he's a prisoner. Like it just served time. And he's talking about like, well, you know, he's bullied as a kid. That's very sad. Yo, who wasn't? If you weren't punched in the face as a kid. What's wrong with you? You need to grow up. You need to go outside right now and go ask a stranger to punch you in the face because you need to feel some sort of struggle in your life. Struggle create what do they call that? Pressure creates diamonds. And if you haven't been, you haven't had a gun pointed at your head, or if you haven't been punched in the face, you ain't living life, friend. So he's complaining a little bit about that. But here, let's hear. I have a couple of clips that we should hear. From the man himself, and uh, you you be the judge. And I, at the end, will rate whether or not his comeback tour has been successful. But let's get to it. You think, if I'm honest, um, you think, okay, something that I would go always go back to, no matter how hard it was um, during that time, I would, I would say, like, everything's okay. Because no matter what, I can I can end my life, and and I just want to say like to hit the self deletion button, the control alt delete on life, to me is uh, again an indication of selfishness. We are forty some odd minutes where he's just talked about like his upbringing, the worst time he's ever bombed, what it's like to be a comedian, yada yada yada. And he's like as bad as it got. I just thought I'd hit self deletion and not feel this, right? And I would constantly think of that, like, all good, everything's fine, you can always end your life. It got that bad for you. It got that bad, for sure. So, uh, let's continue. This might even be not that far off. Yeah, I think, I'll just keep going with this particular clip here. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Was there some truth in the allegations? I was a womanizer, um, and that's the truth. Um, and no, I mean, what I was canceled for was is, was not the truth. Uh, um, but it doesn't matter. It, that's just perception is kind of... Think about his wording there. He says, what I was canceled for was not the truth. If I'm... Uh, someone who's been accused of something i would think i would say i wouldn't say i was canceled for i would say my life was destroyed by false allegations by people who are out to damage me but he goes on let's let's go on and maybe it's choice of words that are a little wrong a lot of people um i was out there having sex uh all the time uh, with with people I barely knew, you know. Feel and bad for me. I realize how that can get. You don't know people's. You don't know people, so you how do, how do you if you don't know them, you don't know what they, what they're, what they're like, and what you know. It's what they're capable of. So instead of blaming himself for his. Uh, having sex with too many people too many strangers and trying to live like the the rock and roll lifestyle and doing whatever he was doing uh he blames the fact that he didn't know who he was having sex with and he didn't know that they would betray him is essentially what he's saying i was definitely like and i had a chip on my shoulder too i was like well they don't, nobody likes me they just think they 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 they, they, they like me now they wouldn't have liked me when I was being fucking bullied in high school. They just like me now because I'm fucking, I'm on tour, I'm, I'm, I'm famous, you know? And I remember having a chip on my shoulder about that. 
<laughs> a chip on my shoulder, which made me want to have sex with more chicks. Yeah, dude. I just it's hard to feel sorry for him here. Like, uh, woe is me, self delete like all you check all the boxes. Um let me check my my other clip here. Let's check this last bit here. We'll look at his podcast. We'll wrap it up and we'll give Chris D'Elia a review because that's what he earned. I hate to say something so generic or like <clears throat> hashtaggy, but like, man, life is so fucking crazy. And it's, there's so much like love and pain and, and, and in it. And, and, and it's so real and, and palpable at some times. And, All this, like, sitting here, too, and of him, like, you know, being, like, it's like he was self-reflective, but not actually thinking about any of this. I, you know, Jesus, yeah. I fucking hate going to therapy. I go to so much therapy and, like. The twists and turns and the ups and downs I of life. I just fucking are, hate it, bro. Just so I, I, that's why people say, like, oh, don't you just love going to therapy? It's like, dude, <laughs> what are you talking about there? What are you talking about there? You know? You're still a young man. You got plenty of years ahead of you. Nah, I just get dumber, bro. What, just... What, what's been your favorite point of your career? So he just, that was the point where he just talks about how much he hates therapy and, and like, what does he go to discuss? Maybe you go to discuss the fact that you were a degenerate, maybe? I mean, I, I don't understand. If you're looking for repentance, don't you just throw yourself on the fire and say, you know, I'm so blessed and fortunate that my life did not disintegrate. My wife didn't leave me. I still have two amazing boys or whatever he has. I, it's just a little confusing. And it does not feel as... Um, the penance has not been paid. We need to send you to the penitentiary, my friend, where you can take 30 lashes and sit in the dark and... And think of your your ways. We need some Quakers to educate this man. Let's check out. He still has his own uh, his own YouTube site. Uh, he still has a lot of subscribers. Look, I and I'm sure he has a lot of fans. Don't get me don't get me twisted. Again, not convicted. Convicted in public opinion, which is not fair. I don't think that his like contrition is awful interesting or or all that good. And he's like, I have to try so hard not to be funny in this, even though my therapy said I should be, make fun of it. Whatever you do, you bro, you do br you. But I don't think people are gonna find you that interesting anymore, uh, especially when you be labeled like super creep. But he's super good because it's congratulations with Crystalia. Weird, weird. Um, and he's still doing shows and he's, or he's still doing things. He's getting, you know, 50,000 views. That's no joke. He's got a solid following. More power to you. I don't think, again, without being convicted, he does not, he should not lose his right to earn any of that bread. So congratulations to him. Keep, keep doing you, bro. Do I have to believe you? Maybe not so much. Um... Or at least I don't believe your contr contrition. I don't know if anything that occurred was real or not. So, again, that he said it was like four years ago, but here he is c coming out of the coming out of the woodwork, crawling out of the muck, trying to rebuild himself. Uh, I don't think the interview is a good look for him. I'm gonna give him a three out of five on the interview, but I'm gonna give him a ten out of ten for effort, baby. You come dressed like a cholo, trying to look like a prisoner, get your, get your prison tats, baby. You know, I think he's had them since before, but again, me not being super familiar with him, I just thought this was interesting. It's a good thing to review. And uh, let me know, what's your rating? You give him a, wait, on a, if you watch the interview, do you give him a 10 out of 10, 3 out of 10, 7 out of 10? How about apparel? He gets a sick. He gets a seven out of ten for apparel because he's selling it hard. He gets an eight out of ten for prison tattoos, three out of ten for sincerity, and a four out of ten for actually understanding what he's apologizing for. So, there you go, folks. I'll give you a spread. You give me the spread. In the meantime, check us out. Join our spread. It's tasty. It's on Friday night, seven thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can go join us. Join our podcast. It's an amazing show. 
And you can also get replays of it for free to you on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all those great places and more. We'd love to have you hang out. Come join the channel. We do super chats, all that good jazz and more. We need your help. Like and subscribe. Don't forget, thumbs up. Really appreciate it. We love all y'all. You do some great things. Uh, we do some great things. But as for myself, I'm on to the next one. Thank you.